Located in the heart of West Africa, Mali is a vast country that's bigger than Texas, New Mexico, and Oklahoma combined. While the country is rich in history and culture, it's one of the poorest nations in the world. The average person lives on less than one dollar a day. Mali is home to more than a dozen different ethnic groups. While each group has its own distinct culture and language, they're unified by a common religion, Islam. With over one billion followers, Islam is the fastest growing religion on earth. Its origins trace back to the city of Mecca in Saudi Arabia, where in the year 610, the prophet Muhammad began to receive revelations. Muhammad called upon people to worship one God. Although Muslims refer to this God as Allah, it's the same God that Christians and Jews pray to. Allah is simply the Arabic word for God. In fact, even Arab Christians refer to God as Allah. Muhammad received the revelations in Arabic. They were written down in Arabic, and collectively, they became the Islamic holy book, or Quran. Islam spread quickly throughout the Middle East, and by the 11th century, it made its way into West Africa via traveling merchants and traders. The people of Mali embrace the new religion, and today, over 90% of the population is Muslim, or followers of Islam. As Jews attend temple and Christians church, Muslims go to a mosque. This is the world-famous mosque in the city of Jenne in northern Mali. This mosque, which is almost entirely constructed of mud, dates back to the 12th century. It's one of the oldest and largest mud buildings in the world. When Muslims gather in the mosque to pray, they are led in prayer by an imam, just like a preacher or a rabbi would lead Christians or Jews in prayer. An imam is usually the person in the community who is most learned in the teachings of Islam. While some began studying the Quran at a young age, many imams in Mali have not even had a basic education since rural villages often do not have schools like Tegela, for example, where BWB came to build a school. Tegela did not have a school before BWB got there, so virtually every man, woman, and child was illiterate, including the village imam, Drisa Sise. He can't read his Quran, but it's sacred to him, since he believes that he's holding the true words of God as they were spoken to Muhammad. He's memorized some verses of the Quran, and he's able to recite these from memory so he can lead the village in prayer. What truly unites all Muslims, both throughout Mali and the world, is their practice of the five pillars of Islam. These pillars, or laws, are what guide Muslims through their daily lives. The first pillar is the testimony of faith. It says that there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his final prophet. There is no baptism in Islam. One need only say and believe in the testimony of faith to become Muslim. The second pillar is prayer, which every Muslim must do five times a day. Throughout every village, town and city in Mali, you will hear the call to prayer, which reminds people when it's time to pause and give praise to God. One meaning of the word Islam is submission, so a Muslim is one who submits to the will of God. You can see this reflected in the way that Muslims pray. They get down on their hands and knees, and their forehead will touch the ground. What is also significant about Muslim prayer is the direction in which they pray. Muslims always face Mecca while praying. Mecca is the holy land for Muslims because it's where Muhammad was born and received his first words from God. This picture of Mecca hangs on the wall of the village mosque in Tegela so people know which direction to pray towards. Mecca is also relevant to the third pillar of Islam, pilgrimage. It is the duty of every Muslim who is physically and financially able to travel to Mecca at least once in their life. Namali is a very poor country, so most people aren't able to afford the pilgrimage. So often, communities will collect money for years, and when they've saved enough, they'll send one person to Mecca on behalf of the entire community. This is one woman who has been able to make the trip. 
The fourth pillar is charity. Every Muslim is required to give 2.5% of their yearly savings to the poor. Despite the fact that most Malians are very poor, virtually everyone gives charity. If they can't give money, they will give their charity in the form of food. A farmer, for example, will give a part of his harvest to a family that is worse off than his own. The fifth and final pillar of Islam is fasting, which takes place during the holy month of Ramadan. During Ramadan, Muslims will not eat or drink from sunrise to sunset. Ramadan is a time for prayer and reflection. Through fasting, people aim to regain control over their desires and practice self-discipline. Another fundamental aspect of Islam is the concept of jihad, or struggle. In the early days of Islam, jihad often meant the struggle that Muslims waged against people hostile to the new religion. Sometimes battles erupted, but usually only in defense of the people and their religion. Today, jihad is often confused with holy war, but as one imam explained to me, it really refers to the internal struggle that every Muslim wages to remain a good person. The word Islam not only means submission, but also peace. Like each of the world's major religions, Islam is truly about peace and one's relationship with God. Each of the pillars serves to guide the everyday lives of Muslims, even in the most remote villages like Tegela, where BWB came to build. Every day you see signs of the religion, from the call to prayer five times daily, to people stopping and breaking for prayer in their fields or at the worksite. But Islam was also a major factor in how quickly we built the school. During the month of Ramadan, no celebrations are allowed because it's a time for prayer and reflection. The villagers knew they wanted to have a giant celebration for the school. So we were in a race against time to finish before the start of Ramadan. Construction was back-breaking work. Tegela is a remote village, two hours from the nearest paved road, and we had no modern tools to use in building the school. But through the motivation and determination of the villagers, we are able to complete the project in only seven weeks, finishing just one day before the start of Ramadan, allowing us to celebrate. Now, for the first time, these kids will have the chance to go to school and learn, just as we have learned about Islam in Mali. This video was shot on location in West Africa. For Building with Books, I'm Jennifer Joyce in Tegela.